Literally by God's grace. So let's just see how this goes. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Esther and I am a second year law and criminology student at Cardiff University. Today I'll be participating in the speed moot and then after it will be a networking event and then the semi-finalists and the finalists will be mooting in front of an audience. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get through that round, but we will see. This is today's outfit. So we've got a black bodysuit, a black blazer, and some black working trousers. So the dress code was business formal, but you could wear sneakers if you wanted to or trainers. So going with a black suit is always the standard. And if you're going to study law, you're going to go to university, have a black fitted blazer because it will help you so much when you go to networking events or just mooting competitions such as this. So if you are interested in finding out what's going to happen today, feel free to stick around and I hope you enjoy it. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe, like, like, comment and subscribe and follow me on this journey of navigating life which right now is just university and Christianity. The problem is, I don't know whether I should go for a red coat or a black coat. I think I'm gonna go. We're back with oh, Asha. <laughs> How are we feeling? Very, very good. Our opponents look like they will eat us alive. Our full grown barristers, that is my. How do you feel? Uh, nervous. Mm -hmm. My stomach hurts. <laughs> is everyone's stomachs? Yeah, we're allowed to take stuff. How did you feel like you did in this round? Um, you know what, it was alright. We can could do better, but you know, we smashed it up for our first time. For my first time. So we have like 15 minutes until our second round, so we're just going to be preparing for it. So we're on to the second round and we're the appellants for this case. We did all right in the first one, but we need to do so much better in the second one. We got really high scores and we're just like, we've calmed down our nerves from the first round. So hopefully we do better. How do you think we did for the second round? Mm, it was all right. It was all right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Our judge was- done it, it's finished now. Yeah. Well, kind of. Our judge was really good though. Like he was asking. It was amazing. Like, as in, like, it wasn't good for us because of the questions, mm. but like, you could tell he was quite a good. He's very experienced. He's very knowledgeable. Like, yeah. And he kept asking questions during the meet, which was really good. And I think it really developed. Like, yeah, from getting no questions to getting loads of questions. Loads of questions. Big jump, but... So, what would you say you're raising awareness for for this competition? Well, for this movie competition, we want to be able to help the Cardiff University students get their networking. If you look to the right, we actually have loads of junior lawyers and community members to be able to help students get to that next level of their professionalism. And to also get awesome prizes, some work experience. Some work experience. Some privileges, they yeah. teams, placements, also your men's body wash, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. But mainly just to be able to raise money to support the charity work, to help vulnerable people in Cardiff, because especially with the economic crisis and the pandemic, we want to be able to do our part to be able to get them to where they need to be. Amazing. Thank you. Don't be sad if you didn't make it through because it's only four teams out of like 26 teams. So the first team is Molly and Charlie. Woo! The second is David and Dylan. Woo! The third is Esther and Aisha. Yeah. What the f <laughs> Are you here? Uh, so we're just bringing them on. If you guys can come forward and I'll let you know your size and stuff. Okay. So we made it to the semi-final round, literally by God's grace. 
and so we're gonna be prepping for the other side right now because that's not the side that we argued so let's just see how this goes so they're currently doing like a fundraising thing with like pieing people's faces and bodies and whatever but we are out here prepping for our moot because we are doing it in front of people this time like a whole audience so we need to prep for it ASAP <laughs> This is what I had for lunch, a chicken meal and bacon plain bagel. Your Lordship, my name is Esther Wan and I appear for the Senior Council for the Appellant and for Total Forces and my learned friend is Aisha Baig who will appear for the Junior Council. Across the way we have Evie Bradshaw who will appear as the Senior Council for Mr Finnegan and we will have Thomas Savitz Sullivan as the Junior Council. My Lord, there are two grounds of appeal in this instant case. I will deal with the first relating to there being no consideration for the promise and my learned friend Aisha will deal with the second relating to the fact that promissory estoppel is inapplicable in this present case. Would my lordships like a brief summary of the case facts? Yes please, it'd be helpful. Mr Finnegan Gibson had recently become unemployed and paid total courses to attend a course to train as a human resources manager. The course cost, costed £4,000 and required an additional £500 booking fee. It is possible to cancel the course up to one week before it started and the £4,000 fee was going to be paid by his uncle, Leo. Finnegan had attended a number of courses with total courses in the, in the past when he worked as a human resources assistant he also sent many work colleagues on courses run by Total Courses. In short, Finnegan had been contacted by um, Audrey Bradsley, who was also one of the participants on the course, and they had mentioned that they were able to, and were entitled to a 50% discount due to his early booking. Further, that booking had been made 20 minutes after Mr Finnegan's booking. Finnegan had contacted Total Courses and had asked to have the 50% discount applied to him as well. Total Courses took into consideration their long commercial relationship and in the future, whether he attains a human resources job, he would be a regular customer and hopefully refer more customers to the business. The sales representative of Total Courses, accepting Mr Finnegan's points, verbally agreed to the 50% discount. Ten days before the course started, Finnegan fell out with his uncle Leo and it became clear that he would have to pay the course fee himself. He quickly decided manager, who lent him £2,000 as a career development, but he made this clear that it would not lend him any more if he required it so. He has no potential income, other source of income apart from job seekers allowance, and the course went well. An invoice was sent to Mr Finnegan for £4,000 and Mr Finnegan complained and reminded them of the sales rep agreement. He sent a cheque for £2,000 to Total Courses with the four words, full and final statement, on the reverse. The cheque was cashed by Total Courses. Total Courses suffered a downturn in business and decided to seek a claim in the remaining £2,000 that from Mr Finnegan, arguing that they are not bound by the sales rep promise as no consideration had been given for it. Further, their claim was that the acceptance of Finnegan's £2,000 cheque did not preclude them from claiming the remaining £2,000 as Mr Finnegan had no, provided no consideration for the promise that the account had actually been settled. Finally, even in the absence of consideration, Mr Finnegan could not raise an estoppel to prevent Total Course from going back on the promise as an estoppel cannot apply to one-off debts. In the county court, his honour, Judge Davis, found that Mr Finnegan was not liable for the £2,000 
on the grounds that one total courses was bound by its original was not bound by its, was bound by its pr original promise to give the 50 percent discount because there was consideration for the promise though a promise to reduce the price stemming from the principal in William and Rockbury Rose in 1991. And secondly, even if there was no consideration for total promises, total courses promise of a discount, they would be estoppeled by the later promise to accept the £2,000 in full settlement of the balance as the promise had been made with the intention that it would be acted upon and Finnegan had relied on this. The appellant had left the leave to appeal to the Court of Appeal. Now, if your lordship has no further questions, I will now uh, I would now proceed to my submissions. Thank you. Great. Firstly, there was no consideration for the promise. Consideration is the third requirement of a contract formation after an initial agreement. This is needed to make a legally binding contract. The original doctrine of consideration, brought by Silk and Marek in 1809, should be respected and where it was held that performance of an existing duty was not good consideration. In that case, the promise was made by a captain to a very contract with his crew was void for want of consideration between in exchange because of because in exchange for the promise, the captain received services from the crew which already had a pre-existing contractual duty to perform. Performance on a pre-existing contractual duty is considered good consideration and good law. The basic rule has traditionally been that it is not good consideration to do or promise to do what you are already contractually bound to the other contracting party to do, as demonstrated in the case of Williams and Roughry Bros in 1991. Roughry Bros were builders who were contracted to refurbish 27 flats belonging to a housing corporation. The contract had a penalty clause for late completion and the appellant had subcontracted the work to Williams, a carpenter. When Williams fell behind with his work with the appellants, the appellants offered him bonus payment to finish on time. Williams carried on working until the payments stopped. He sued the appellants for breach of contract. The appellants argued that the, argue, the agreement to pay extra was unenforceable as William had no consideration. The appellants only received the practical benefits of avoiding the penalty clause. They did not receive any benefit in law. Williams was only agreeing to do what he was already bound to do. In this present case, Mr Finnegan had benefited from the to course total courses ran with the original offer and acceptance of £4,000 as the total sum payment of the course. Mr Finnegan has had practical benefits of which total courses has not as they have suffered a downturn in business and are seeking £2,000 they are lawfully entitled to based on the contract they originally agreed with was with Mr Finnegan. If total courses is held by their original promise, Mr Finnegan should also fulfil his promise of getting a human resources job and pay the £2,000, but he did not as his sole income is based on a job seeker's allowance in the present Relations between his uncle and himself soured with which before initially made him unable to source an income for the price of total course and instead used a bank loan. Until this day, Williams and Rothery Bros 1991 has brought uncertainty since it has been used. However, applying the principle of practical benefit, Mr Finnegan has enjoyed many practical benefits in comparison to total courses. Practical benefits constitute valuable consideration meaning that Mr Finnegan has enjoyed all the benefits of the course, he should be legally bound to his contract to pay the whole sum of £4,000 as there has been a breach of contract. An MW, NWB Business Exchange Centre and Rock Advertising LTD 2018 UK SC 24, the Supreme Court declined to extend Williams and Bros 1991 to so accept less and consideration was found in MWB. A written agreement should stand and Lord Justice Russell argued that courts must be more ready to find the existence of consideration to reflect the intention of parties in contracts. Moreover, Lord Justice Glidwell stated that the doctrine of economic distress or duress protects the promiser in which in this case is total courses. Duress is one of the main problems which allow the performance or promise to perform a certain contractual obligation owed to the other contracting party as a consideration for a new contract or unilateral variation of the original one. Moreover, in Folks and Bear 1883, 
This also goes against Williams and Rothery's principles and highlights its controversy. A promise to pay part of a debt is not good consideration, stemming from Pinnell's rule for an agreement to settle the full amount. The House of Lord favoured the creditor and the debtor's promise to pay a lesser amount or the same amount over a period of time was not good consideration. Secondly, on my second point, consideration is traditionally required for the formation of a contract, but also the variation of a new contract. The obligation to fulfil the contract has to be met on both sides. Mr Finnegan did not meet his as he did not get the human resources job, as I stated earlier, and we cannot rely on the future possibility for reliability for this instance as the future is uncertain. The promise of future business is not always enforceable because it is dependent on too many uncertain factors. For example, A, whether he will actually obtain a human resources job, B, whether he would truly choose total courses for his training needs, and C, whether total courses will still be in business at that time. Therefore, my lords, it is based on these two submissions I would urge the court to allow the appeal. Do my lordships have any questions? I have one in relation to, and I appreciate your point about potential future business, thank you. My query is raised on the past business mm -hmm. as I understand that he has previously sent or referred people to the course. Mm -hmm. What is it you say that? Um, in terms of him bringing clients previously. previously. Well it was good business for Total Courses and understandably we could have said that was a reliable customer at a certain mm -hmm. point. However in this economic crisis especially in 2022 with economic duress and inflation, we cannot be reliant on the future or possibility a 50-50 chance that he would be able to get another human resources job and be able to send other colleagues into the course as it is a big sum, £4,000, of which in this present case he is unable to pay or unwilling to pay as well. Thank you. Thank you. No further questions? If there are no further questions, I will now pass on to my learned friend, Aisha Bake, who will deal with the remaining submission. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, oh, so Ran right into a little difficulty because the scores of two, the both rounds of the two moods were quite different. Um, it's because of different judges judging different moods. So in the mood in not point zero, Two, two. The judges were more strict with the scoring, while in um, 2.27 it's more lenient. But I've talked to the judges, so we've decided that the teams that will go ahead to the final, they're going to be Molly and Charlie, and Tom and Evie. So this is, this is, uh, so Rebecca is my trust tutor, so that's a big nice break up for the class. Okay. I mean, I can go for what am I holding? <laughs> Give it a squeeze. Try and figure it out. Do you get bonus points if you figure That's out what it is? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Russell, which hand yeah. I'm gonna say box one, just be ready. <laughs> uh, it's something in a bowl. Can you guess? You're not far off us. <laughs> sort of um Jenny or something, or is it worms? Um, Anyone it's, else? It's, it's, it's wet, yes. Yeah? Of the reasonable person test. Part A of subsection 1A in assessing whether the defendant met the points. And on this basis, I submit that your lordships dismiss the appeal. As advice is on the amendment defence of the abnormality of mental functioning. Shopping centre, again, the entire body. Um, and allow us to help um, people from low income and marginalised areas who cannot get access to justice due to the Glasgow Act 2012, which is strictly legal aid in a variety of places. Um, so we really, really thank your participation. It's been absolutely excellent, and you know, we hope we'll find you as much as we can. Getting some hot chocolate.
we get free? I think we're like, don't make it free on the rest. Alright, are we ready? Wait, wait, wait. Yes. I'm telling you. Definitely lost words, my friends. Live, laugh, laugh. They've laughed more. No. Skidoo. Oh! oh, there it is. oh Not the oh, top! Oh, that's so cold. Woo! Right, no, that's it. Get winky. Go on, boy. Yeah, thank you. Oh my god, it's time to be real! <laughs> so after things wrapped up i briefly headed to the library to meet with two of my course mates slash friends to study and coincidentally we were wearing white and black so here i am studying for one of my essays I have been here for an hour and I think I will go home now, shower, take a rest and eat because I'm very hungry and maybe call it a day from here. I've literally been out since 8 or 9 and the time went by so quickly so yeah. It's now currently 6.51 so yeah also appreciate this whiteboard it's off um i have no idea not law after i headed out the library i went back home and popped into marks and spencers as they had loads of sandwiches for reduced price so that concludes the end of my vlog i hope you guys have enjoyed this and that it has been informative as i have mentioned before please leave a like comment and subscribe and i hope to see you guys in my next video